Hi guys, welcome to the next video of the Spring MVC tutorial series. In the last video, we set up a basic Spring MVC project. We also talked about the Spring configuration XML file, which is based on the name of the dispatcher servlet. We have not discussed about this configuration file, and we also don't know what this file is used for and who uses this file. So we have so many questions going around in our mind when I mentioned about this configuration XML file which the Spring MVC will be using. Now, Before we try to understand what is the use of this file, we need to understand about one concept called dependency injection, which is the core concept as far as the Spring framework is concerned. And it is one of the primary features that Spring provides. I think we should give some time in understanding this feature which the Spring is providing us. Let's try to understand this. One thing we already know that any application consists of two or more classes that collaborate with each other to perform some business logic. Traditionally what happens, each object is responsible to get the reference to the objects it depends or collaborates with or we can say that they need to get the reference of their dependencies on their own. Sometimes what we do, we just create the objects using the new operator and get the reference to perform some business logic using that object reference. Now this is like hard coding stuff where we are tightly coupling both the objects to each other. Now let's understand this by an example. Suppose we have one user class that contains user ID and password of a user. It also has one method to validate the user ID and password. Now suppose we have one LDAP validator class that validates the user ID and password using the LDAP. So what we can do is use this LDAP validator class to validate our user ID and password instead of validating them by our own in our user class. Let's create one user class. It has two fields, one is user ID and another is password. Let's create those. For time being, we'll just hard code it with some values. It has one validate method. Right now, we'll just keep it as blank. Okay, now create one LDAP validator class. In the package services. It has one method validate credential. It takes two parameters user ID and password. What I'm doing right now, I'm just putting a sys out here that the validation is happening. Using the LDAP and returning true. Now in our user class, let's code this validate method. 
return this. Okay, so what we are doing here is first instantiating the LDAP validator class and then calling its validate credential method, passing the user ID and password from the user class. So our user object is now dependent on this LDAP validator class or you can say LDAP validator object. Now at first sight this code looks good. Actually there is no problem with this code. This is the way we have been coding so far. The only problem it has is it is tightly coupled with a specific validator class or object. Now there could be several types of validator classes available. Suppose if we want to use another validator class like DB validator class which uses database for the validation. But since we have hard coded our validator class here in the validate method or in the user class we can't use some other validator class even if we want to we'll have to modify our code to use some other validator class and that is not a good idea because we'll have to recompile the code and redeploy to make it work so this is the problem our user class is tightly coupled with one type of validator class and we cannot enhance our user class to use some other validator class without modifying the code and compiling our code. Now this is the problem that is solved by the dependency injection. So with dependency injection objects are given their dependencies by a third party and in our case it will be spring. So objects are not expected to create or obtain dependencies like this. Rather dependencies are injected to this object or it into its one of the member variables. Let's see how does that happen. We have one member variable. So what we have done, we have removed the logic of creating and obtaining the reference of the specific validator class from our user class. This responsibility will be taken care by Spring and we have created one member variable, it'll have validator corresponding to the dependent object. And let's create the getters and setters for this. And later we are using this member variable reference to call this validate credential method. So we have removed the hard coding stuff from our code and now we rely on spring to feed the dependent object to our member variable. Now this is somewhat better but we still have problem in enhancing our user class to some other validator class because this member variable can accept only LDAP validator object. So the best solution would be to use some interface variable rather than a reference to a specific validator class. So let's try to change this. Just use the validator interface. Let me change this here. Now this, this interface would have one method validate credential in it. Let's create this interface. interfaces package let's add this method there now let's modify our LDAP validator class to implement this validator interface to regenerate this letters and setters so now you can see that our user class looks looks better it looks pretty neat and clear and there is no hard coding stuff here and we have also coded to the interface so our user class is having a reference to validator interface 
which can point to any type of variator class which we would have in our system provided that each of those variator class implements the variator interface. So now our user object is not creating or obtaining the reference of the variator object. Instead, it's given a variator object from Spring. It is the Spring that creates a specific variator. Suppose LDAP variator object and then passes that to our user object into this member variable. So this is the way our user object gets a reference to our LDAP variator object into this member variable. Now if we want to use DB variator object then we need to tell Spring to provide us the DB variator object into this member variable and DB variator object will be injected to our user object. So our dependencies can be swapped out with a different implementation without the depending object like user object knowing the difference. So you can see that our user class doesn't need to be modified or recompiled if we want to use some other dependency. Our user class is now loosely coupled with the variator class. Now one more benefit which we get out of this dependency injection is the unit testing of our user object. Now without dependency injection our user object is always using the LDAV variator, variator object while in development environment this object might not work properly so what we would need is we need a mock variator object to use but for that we, need, we would need to modify our code to use this mock variator object so certainly this is not testing friendly but if we are using dependency in injection like this then we can pass our mock object to our user object from outside and then test the variation using this mock variator class. Now the thing which we haven't talked about is how to tell Spring about which dependency we need to use for our object. Our user object is dependent on the variator objects so we need to tell Spring about which variator object we want to use for our user object. Now this is actually done with the help of an XML file which is also known as the Spring configuration file where we specify all the objects which the Spring needs to create, what all the dependency objects it needs to inject. So all these things we provide in an XML file which Spring reads when the Spring container loads up. We will discuss about the configuration XML file, the Spring container and we will see the dependency injection in action in subsequent videos. In this video we just tried to cover the basic idea behind the dependency injection concept. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.